Thank you for welcoming me onto your screens or onto your headphones, depending on how you're watching this. I'm Eddie, and this is The Rollback. And today, folks, I'll be talking about Choose or Die, a.k.a. Fuck the 80s, the latest original horror film from Netflix. Uh, as of right now, it's trending number three, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this film is different. And I would say my first my first uh, impression was that it was going to be a lot like Bandersnatch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bandersnatch, it was a uh, film by the creators of Black Mirror. Uh, essentially what Bandersnatch was, was that it was this like choose your own adventure movie where you'd be given specific choices throughout the film and then it would play out according to what you chose. And you could theoretically win or lose or have the best bad ending. It, 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 was a, it was a thing but it was great it was interactive so I kind of assumed that this film would be the same way I was wrong but that doesn't make it a bad thing uh, Choose or Die is morbid it's grim it's gruesome it's stressful it's gory it's not original but original it's a different kind of film and I appreciate that this film very much feels like a throwback to like 80s films as far as like like the, the synopsis belongs in the 80s kids play a cursed video game that forces them to choose between two horrible situations while trying to survive yeah no that's pretty 80s um but nonetheless somehow this horror film is just it's weird because like initially you think oh it's like for teenagers or kids or whatever like oh choose or die kids and like fuck do not let kids watch this this movie gets gruesome real quick so just to establish like the rules of the of the game, the filmmakers <laughs> in the first like five minutes force a man to choose. Uh, initially, it's like you know, do you want to stay in the cave or do you want to get out of the cave? S stay, I guess. Okay, do you want to refresh your beverage? And he's like, yes. So he gets a free beer, and he's like, oh, this game's awesome, this is badass. And then it makes him choose her ears or his tongue, talking about his stepson and his wife who are arguing in the other room, and. Like, Jesus Christ. Good job of establishing the rules early on. Uh, so good job on that. Also, in addition to that, even the opening credits serve a purpose. You see that he's forced to choose between mutilating his wife or his uh, stepson. And so the third level, in which case he's given the option, do you want to make copies of the game or do you want to continue on? To which he decides to make copies and distribute them. Thus, the curse continues. Uh, they, this curse... Thing falls into the hands of it's either Kayla or oh by the way the star is real quick uh, clearly the star she is the star uh, her name is Kayla she is played by Miss Lola Evans which good on her I, I don't recall seeing her in anything else but I mean she did a tremendous job she carries this film on her back I know I use that term very often but she does uh, in addition to that we also have one Mr. Asa Butterfield you probably know him from Sex Ed he actually plays Isaac her crush slash best friend like he has a crush on her there's like feelings there somehow somewhere um she's in a bad situation her mother's going through depression her little brother died and i'm assuming she's going through bouts of depression um the landlord is a bit of a bastard his name is lance um she has a crappy cleaning job that she tries her best at but she's also seemingly really smart at coding and tech she wants to make a video game uh, along with Isaac. So, I mean, you have your protagonist, and then the adventure goes from there. Uh, and man, like, it, props to them, each part of the game, each round that she goes through is just different enough to where you can feel it getting more and more intense. In the first round, she, uh, you know, when it comes to choose this or choose this, two horrible things, the, essentially what it comes down to is that the, the waitress, that was very nice to her, by the way, like, she had she didn't deserve this. The waitress is essentially forced to eat glass. Like, pick up the mess or ignore it. And she's like, uh, pick up the mess. And the waitress actually starts eating the glass. And when uh, when Kayla tries to stop her, she says, I can't stop. This game is essentially overriding what people want to do. And you can only assume they feel the pain, the agony as it happens. Um, round two is her mom is trapped in her apartment. There's like this giant rat creature trying to kill her. It gets really fucked up because she has to tell her mom to jump out the window so she can stall the rat. The mom jumps out and her legs are broken like in reverse, which is like, fuck. Um, and as they're getting closer to the source, trying to figure out how they can beat this game, Kayla and Isaac wind up like 
out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, and Kayla is a essentially forced to confront the fact that she killed she didn't kill her brother it's just like uh, she holds herself responsible like it wasn't her fault that he drowned but like tell that to her conscience which fair enough kid i get you um essentially uh isaac's character gets murdered via like tape going in and out of him and then she has to go to the boss fight where she confronts the dude from the very beginning uh, and this is where it gets a bit odd. I wasn't expecting it, but it kind of made me rethink some things. This film takes some shots at the 80s, uh, hence the term, fuck the 80s. Uh, the guy from the very beginning of the film, the one who created copies, who brutalized his wife and his stepson, comes out and even says, like, why can't guys like me be the hero anymore? Why am I the boss battle? Why am I the bad guy? You know, uh, and that line, fuck the 80s, actually made me think. If you look back, most of the 80s films do star, like, straight white dudes being the hero. Like, it's only now that we're having more of these uh, different people, like uh, like Kayla. Um, I can only assume she's a person of color, uh, overcoming the odds to to win this, this horrible game. Uh, there's also, like, this really cool, intelligent fight where, like, they can't kill each other, but they can only... If they harm themselves, the other person feels it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, it's actually they're trying to, like, murder each other. The, the mom gets out on it and shoots Kayla to try and kill her husband, whom she hates. Um, I just... I like it. I like everything about this film. Uh, it was really unpredictable, and props to them for that. It's hard to find a film that's unpredictable. The gore is genuinely gruesome and hard to watch. There's a lot of cringy stuff in here, and I don't mean cringe as in, ugh, nervous... I'm talking cringe as in, like, you see the poor uh, waitress eating the glass and her mouth starts bleeding. Like, stuff like that. It's harsh. But I like it. It's a good film. It's it's not wholly original, but it's not wholly a ripoff either. It's just something different. And between this and The Adam Project, it's odd because both kind of feel like a synopsis is from the 80s. Both feel like films that don't belong now. But nonetheless, they're welcomed. Um... Essentially, the only content I really have is this film feels a little short. I kind of wish I had gone longer, but maybe they didn't have the story for it. Or I think this was a COVID film. Like, if you notice, in retrospect now, there's very few people within every scene. I don't remember there ever being a scene where it's, like, crowded. But nonetheless, uh, the only other real con is Asa Butterfield's character had to die. I'm sorry, Isaac. I kind of wish he had it, but he did. Uh, on the bright side, though, this film, again, is very unpredictable. There's a lot of things you don't expect to happen that do. Um, that said, this film, I mean, it's a B minus. It's, it's not a bad film by any stretch of the imagination. Is it awe inspiring? Is it like a new wave of horror? No, it's not that film. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Not by any stretch of the imagination. You owe it to yourself to go watch it. This film is, I think because it took a shit in the 80s, it's being review bombed right now. It doesn't deserve that low score in Rotten Tomato. Um, go watch it for yourself and let me know what you think about it. What do you think of this review? Any suggestions to what we should do next? Um, that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Rollback. Uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I am back, as you can see, with better equipment, uh, better recording equipment. I have lights. I have, uh, what do you call it? Production value. That's the word I was looking for. Production value. Um, that's it. Yeah. I've been Eddie, and this was The Rollback. Oh, go check out our podcast. It's always great, most of the time, especially when I'm there, though. Uh, I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone.